So is the government justified in moving this amendment to the law? Joining us on our panel this evening, Shashi Tharoor, Lok Sabha MP of the Congress Party, Nalin Kohli, spokesperson of the BJP, Pawan Varma, Rajya Sabha MP of the JDU. We have uh, Sudhinder Kulkarni, writer and commentator here in the studio with us. Siddharth Bhatia joins us tonight from Mumbai. And Mr. P.C. Parak, the former coal secretary, joins us tonight from Hyderabad. Uh, let me ask Nalin Kohli first. Uh, Nalin Kohli, how is, you know, is, is the BJP really justifying this? Because this was actually uh, a law that you you all brought in when you were in power in the year 2000 on the principle uh, that the TRAI chairman's post was a very powerful position and it shouldn't be compromised in any way uh, you know by, by rewarding him or her uh, with a government assignment once they retired how does the BJP explain that turnaround today on, on this principle not on Mr. Mishra's merits of course we can't speak on Mr. Mishra's merits because uh, after all he is a very meritorious person and he has you know, served in various capacities, whether it's been internationally or in the government of India or the state of UP, across you know, different governments uh, which have been opposed to each other, only on the basis of his competence. However, coming back to the question of principle, if you look at it, it's about correcting an anomaly in the law. I, in, if you will compare it with, say, the insurance uh, regulatory authority, the pension regulatory authority, electricity regulatory authority, where someone can join in a, immediately, this is the only one which is not so. So the government has felt the need to amend it so that a an anomaly in law is corrected. And the second part is that the services of an ex, uh, a meritorious officer is available to the prime minister. Nalin Kohli, the uh, the law is something that your government brought in. That is my point. Uh, and and you know belatedly now because you want a particular officer who is of course a very meritorious officer because Mr. Modi is keen on him. You choose to go through the ordinance route literally days after coming well, to power. Two parts. So there is a big question of principle here. Yes, yes, two parts to it. Um, well, the first part uh, is that you yourself. As everybody else, including Dr. Tharoor when he came out, everyone's segregating the issue from Mr. Mishra and his competence because there can't be a debate on that. And what should the Prime Minister of India have? Should he not have an extremely competent officer with him? Now, having said that, let's get back to the principle. If by that principle, nothing should be amended. The Constitution has undergone amendment. You keep moving with time. And if time so demands us to make changes in laws, are we going to prevent ourselves from changing laws just because we passed them a pre at a previous time? I mean, Gandhiji himself has said in his Swaraj, if I say something today and if I say something, another thing a few years down the line, please take the second comment as being true. Because even I have evolved with time and my views may change. Is this so really I don't know about what the Gandhi principle here we are discussing. Nalan Kohli, come on, is this no, no, really I'm about Mahatma example. Gandhi? This I'm is more to do with the fact that Mr. Modi I'm is keen on a particular it. officer. I, I mean, I, like what, I said, Mr. Mishra's that. competence is not under Let doubt here. That. But there no. are many other competent I'm officers saying, who could be his no, principal secretary. Fair enough. It is. It's. You could have a viewpoint to it, but at the end of the day, you will have to leave the question of whom Mr. Modi, as the Prime Minister of India, would like to have as his uh, okay. as an officer. Okay. Shashi Tharoor, then I'll take the I mean, points to any, you. Just as a question, yeah. Yeah. has any ever any previous government of any party ever sought the advice of anybody outside their own uh, thinking of who should serve the Prime Minister of India or who should be attached to the Prime Minister. So I think there are various principles here. I'm just laying them all in front of you. So Shashi Tharoor, the point that the BJP is then making is that we may have brought in this law, but we feel that there is a need to change it and you know things do evolve with time. Uh, is that something that you, you, you could at least consider? Because things don't remain static and that is a fact. I actually, if you'll give me the time, I'd like to respond to every one of the points that Nalan Kohli has made. First of all, I want to stress to your viewers that we have no agenda against any particular individual, nor are we challenging Mr. Modi, the Prime Minister's right, to be assisted by whomever he deems fit in his office. What we are concerned about is the principle of a law being changed for a particular circumstance when there was nothing wrong with the principle behind the law itself. Telecoms is an extremely complicated issue as we know from the whole 2G scandal. The auctioning of spectrum, the allocation of telecom licenses, these are matters of great sensitivity, considerable financial value and great political import. And therefore, the government and parliament has seen it fit to insulate the chairman of the TRAI from any kind of susceptibility to governmental influence. And I say susceptibility. Mr. Mishra served in that job when there was no prospect of re-employment. So his integrity is not even in question here. 
we are concerned what would happen when a future chairman comes in because this decision of amending this law would imply dangling the prospect, drang, dangling carrots in front of the next incumbent, knowing that he is no longer disqualified from taking a future job. Second, on the argument that the, uh, the uh, uh, Prime Minister should be entitled to be assisted by Mr. Mishra, no problem. Simple solution, get him elected to the Rajya Sabha, put him in as a Minister of State in the PM's office, he can still run the PM's office. Don't amend the TRAI law in order for Mr. Modi to be assisted by somebody he likes. Okay, so you're saying that the principle of the law needs to be defended at, at any cost. Sudhindra Kulkarni, I'll read out to you what Mr. Mishra himself had, uh, had written uh, uh, in, in some years ago uh, to the Ministry of Communications where he had said that he felt that the restrictions were very unfair because they didn't apply. I think Nalin Kohli made that point as well to the SEBI chairman and to the Competition Commission as well. Do you think that therefore taking that point into account that maybe it is fair to go ahead and you know make these posts at par or do you think that this is completely unethical what's happening? No, it's not unethical at all. Uh, I think that this debate is, uh, you know, we are sweating the small stuff. The government is well within its rights to amend a law uh, because first of all as uh, Nalin Kohli so articulate in such an articulate uh, manner explained, there is a certain asymmetry between uh, the rules that apply to retired uh, chairpersons of other commissions and TRAI. And if telecom is important, so is insurance important, so is uh, competition Seven, yeah. commission important. So a certain uniformity is in order. But far more important here is the fact that the Prime Minister should not be hemmed in if he trusts a person and a person who has uh, an outstanding uh, record in government service and wants him as principal secretary, you know, he, should have the, he should have the freedom to do so. And if a certain law comes in the way and if it is not really going to, uh, you, you know, he is not a person with any controversial past, you know, why are we debating this? One more thing, you see, the pri I disagree with uh, Shashi Tharoorji that he can be brought in you know, as a Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, there's a difference between a Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office and Principal Secretary. It's the Principal Secretary who is the main coordinating officer in the Prime Minister's office with the rest of the government along with the Cabinet Secretary. And he is a bureaucrat. He is, in the Prime Minister's view, the most deserving person to be in that position, I think, you know, we should not be debating these small matters. Are they small matters? Of because course. I think the point that Shashi Tharoor and others uh, are, are also making is that the TRAI chairperson's post is a sensitive one. It's a powerful position. No, and that's what you I know, said, the that so is, so is the chairperson no, of but, the competition but should commission. should the reverse be happening, where you ensure that uh, none exactly. of them then uh, actually, uh, ha you know, are rewarded with government posts and they have a cooling off period? I mean, it should be the other way around, not what's happening now. No, you see, if, you know, the Prime Minister's office is an extremely important office. In fact, the most important office in the government of India. Absolutely. And the, most important. the principal secretary is, you know, a good principal secretary can make the Prime Minister's agenda. I'm not talking about Narendra Modi. You know, any good Prime Minister, any effective Prime Minister would like to have a, have a principal secretary who can get things done. Therefore, if may, may she Narendra Modi thinks that Nrupendra uh, Mishra is the right person to be in the day. job, then the government is well within its right to okay. amend the law. Shashi Tharoor has a quick rebuttal, then I'll come to Mr. Pavan Varma. Yes, Mr. Tharoor. A very quick rebuttal. First of all, indeed, if there is an anomaly with other positions, what we should be aspiring to is the higher standard, not the lower one. We should bring everyone up. The same disqualification could apply to every sensitive position. A quick response. Second, yes, indeed, a principal secretary is a bureaucratic position. But once the person has retired from the bureaucracy, he becomes a political appointee anyway. So if he were to come in as a political appointee, he could as well come in through the Rajya Sabha with a job description amended to absorb the functions of coordination of, of, of bureaucrats. So that's not in itself an insuperable objective. But most worrying is Sudhindra saying, why should we let a law stand in the way of the prime minister? That's the principle on which this entire democracy is built. No prime minister is larger than the law. No prime minister is larger than the nation. No prime minister can ride roughshod over legislation that has come out of parliament. 
that very sentence, he actually used the words, why should we let the law stand in the way? That appalls me, Sudhindra. But the no. greatest of respect to you, you no. laws are built. They are the edifice in which a democracy is built. And yes, if they have to stand in the way of the prime minister, the prime minister must work within the law until the law can be changed within the system. You know, That's this is what country. the government That's is doing. The government is, is changing the law. You know, a law should not make the prime minister a prisoner of a system. You see, if he, unless he's doing, you know, he's bringing in a, an undeserving person, a person with a controversial past, then it's a different it's not matter. About the person, it's always been about so, the principle. You know, so long as you're not questioning the integrity or the merit of the person in, 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 in question, you know, why are we making such a big issue of this? Because I think there's been a lot of debate, and I'll come to Mr. Parikh May on I this in just, just a moment. A Pavan Varma, the, I think the debate in this country for a long time has been, and uh, you've been a bureaucrat yourself, uh, that, you know, this, this link between the bureaucracy and the political class, retired bureaucrats getting plum, you know, assignments in government or joining political parties soon after they've retired, it's even happened in this election. And that has been, uh, you know, a rather problematic debate in this country. Is that what this issue is uh, at the end of the day? No, no, I think that's a separate issue. Uh, and thank you for coming to me, Nidhi. Uh, I, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised by Sudhin Kulkarni's statement, someone I greatly respect, saying that the Prime Minister's office is such that in order to fulfill the Prime Minister's wishes, a law brought in as a reform measure. Nidhi, let's get our facts straight before we twist facts to suit a situation. This was an amendment made in 2000 by the NDA government as a reform measure in order to ensure that somebody so entrusted as the chairman of an exceptionally important regulatory authority who is handling literally thousands of crores of allocations is beyond the incentive of any one particular party or government in terms of post-retirement benefits. That was a reform measure. I believe that that reform measure, depending on an assessment of the case, needs to be carried forward with both the SEBI and the Competition Commission if considered necessary, and with certain other key bureaucratic jobs That's what I said. where the impartiality of the particular official in that sensitive assignment needs to be insulated from post-retirement carrots being dangled out before that official. But they have not been yet made into a law. Now, in this case, it was made into a law. Now, in 1987, the Supreme Court said that an ordinance can be brought in in extraordinary circumstances for extraordinary reasons. What we are seeing now, and Sudhindra has worked in the Prime Minister's office, that in far, uh, uh, far apart from saying that the Prime Minister is entitled to do what he wishes, I believe the Prime Minister's office should be the highest benchmark of upholding the law. And let me add, Nidhi, first of all, nobody can contest the fact that Mr. Nitin Mishra's competence is not in question. Secondly, yes, we accept the fact that a Prime Minister is entitled within the framework of law to choose his key aids. But if there is a law which stands in the way of a particular individual, the existential choice before a newly elected Prime Minister who has constantly articulated the highest standards for governance and public life is to either accept that reform measure and certainly not take resort to a short-term expedient measure like the, an ordinance. It's as simple as that. And to argue the fact that a, a mistake was made in the past because other places the reforms did not take place and that needs to be rectified really is carrying this, lo this logic to ridiculous extremes. Okay, I'll the get a BJP response to, to that in a moment. The reform to forward, not reversed. Okay. Not reversed to suit a particular situation. It's a very dangerous policy to follow. Mr. Parikh, as, as a former uh, you know, senior bureaucrat yourself, sir, where do you stand on this debate? Do you believe that we should be actually going in the reverse direction and ensuring that there are, as, as, uh, as Shashi Tharoor and Pavan Varma were saying, that we do the complete opposite? You know, ensure that uh, retired bureaucrats are insulated from this. At least there should be some cooling off period. You see, basically the issue here is that uh, the power to legislate is that of parliament. 
and ordinance rules has to be applied only in exceptional situations and in emergency. Now, to my mind, the, the parliament applied its mind and made that amendment in 2002. Now, if parliament thinks that uh, the, the, that kind of amendment is not required anymore, it needs to be changed, then the right route for the government should have been not through the ordinance, but to bring the, bring the amendment in parliament, discuss the issue, and then take a, a course which is considered to be right course. Now, to my mind, uh, I mean, there is no reason why only this this rule of uh, non-employment should apply only to try, because we have so many regulators, and if it does not apply anywhere else, then it need not apply to try. Now, I also think that if you have a reasonably good cooling period, then there should be no objection to getting uh, uh, officers back into the position where their services may be very useful. So my, to my mind, the matter should not have been brought through the ordinance, but it should have been brought by bringing an amendment in parliament. The issue should have been discussed th threadbare in the parliament, and then a proper view should have been taken. And, but the BJP could very well argue, Siddharth Bhatia, that the Prime Minister needs a principal secretary. And there was a considerable gap between when this government took over and when the parliament session began. So could they have waited for that? Or was the ordinance route just not the way to do it, as Mr. Parikh says? Well, you know, uh, three or four points emerge. Uh, all the previous speakers have remarked upon uh, separating the man from the principal. But three or four things emerge. One is that the very first act of this uh, government in parliament is an ordinance. I mean, that's something to think about. So that means that in the future, one, one imagines that if there is anything that comes in the way of some um, act that the government wants to do, but uh, the numbers are not adding up, you find an ordinance to do it. And you're using an ordinance uh, for a person, uh, really, in, it boils down to a person rather than a higher principle, whatever uh, the BJP spokesperson might say. The second thing is that, as uh, Mr. Parikh just said, that this was decided by parliament. This time round, it is a matter of expediency. It is not a matter of principle at all. Uh, you, what you're doing is you are saying, I want this man. Mr. Modi is known to be a person, even in Gujarat, and as he has come, he has imposed his own people in the party and all that. I want this man under any circumstances. Find a way. And they have found a way. And you have reduced a regulator's office to that of a government department. You remember before the election, there was all this discussion about the police commissioner of Bombay resigning and becoming an MP and all that, a candidate. Yeah. So what you've really done is actually the regulator was supposed to be on a higher plane than mere government servants or government departments. Instead of now aiming for more higher planes, you have brought him down to that level. So really, it's a very bad precedent, according to me, for the future to say, if this does not work, I'll find a way, whatever way, to change the law or to bypass it.